Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I'm in Ireland. To be exact, I have a Writer's Tears Copper Pot, pot Mazala Cask Finish Irish Whiskey. Florio Mazala Single Cask. Very good. So we have a total of 2,000. 430 bottles worldwide. Bernard Walsh, the founder and the CEO of Righteous Tears, as well as the Irishman, so it's Walsh uh, Whiskey, actually um, did about two years ago the Irishman with the Florio Mazala cask finish. Back then he had nine hogshead in total, hogshead that he did. I have here um, cask number 2276. One of 385 um, bottles um, from that cask with 46%. This was over here. I bought it in Ireland at the distillery. This was 79 euros. Here we have 75 euros. So I have cask number um, 1348. Also one of 492 bottles. So we have 385 and this is bottled at 45%. So we're gonna compare the two of them. This is by the way, whiskey base number 130132. And the interesting thing was there's five casts. We know that cast number 3145 was earmarked and actually sent to Australia. We know that cast number 3147 was um, earmarked and sent to the Dublin airport. They have great offers there at the Loop at the Dublin airport. If you're ever there, go buy Irish whiskey. You can get better deals and better whiskey at the airport than any place else in most of Ireland. Then 3149 was actually sent to the Celtic Whiskey Shop, also in Dublin. A great place to go if you're in Dublin to find wonderful, wonderful Irish whiskey. And the 384, um, um, the 348 was sent to general use, which means luckily it ended up a little bit here in Germany. I bought it at whiskey.de. Now there's a cask missing, 3146. Where did it end up at? We don't know. One um, blogger actually has the conspiracy theory. Bernard Walsh has it in his kitchen. He put a little tap on it. And now he's going to just enjoy the 400 some bottles that comes out of that cask. Mm, I don't think so. So Writer's Tears um, is a mix out of single pot still whiskey. Usually about 40 to 50 percent um, unmalted barley together with malted barley and also a mix of single malt whiskey, which means 100% malted barley. 40 to 60%, I think. Over here, we have exactly the same, but it's 60 to 40%. And this is the Irishman. Both of these brands belong to Walsh, uh, Walsh Whiskey. And uh, this was first, I think, and this came later. It might have been opposite. Every year, we have a um, cast strength version of this, as well as this. Um, and so they're very, very, very similar in their taste and in their profile. Now, if I nose these, nice vanilla moment, strong berry. Um, I have a conspiracy theory. I have a little idea. I think Bernard Walsh bought, bought nine casts here from the Floria winery in the on the island of Sicily in Italy, where they make the famous Mazala um, red heavy sweet wine he put his wonderful um, irish man spirit into those casks and let it mature for a total of i think 12 months if i remember correctly so 12 months exactly he bottled this sold this this was a hit in ireland here in germany not really even well known because it wasn't even delivered here to germany therefore not many people participated in my bottle share then my my theory goes after he'd emptied the barrels, he put the spirit of the Righteous Tears in those same five casks. What happened to the other four, I don't know. Um, and he filled them up and let them set them for another year and then released this basically almost two years to the date later. Because the influence of the casks, it's so much more, it's so extensive and so massive here compared to here. There has to be a difference, in my personal opinion. In Germany, they both were about 75, 79 euros. Not the biggest problem here. Maybe about $90 um, in the States, maybe 95 
Let's try them. 45% ABV. Um, Righteous Tears is normally 40%, so they pumped it up a little bit, um, especially because they wanted the alcohol to um, supplement and to um, support the um, fruity notes of this whiskey. Over here, 46%. Righteous Tears. Mazala cask finish. I have a little bit of a problem with the writer's tears. I have the feeling that the Mazala cask finish is fighting the native spirit that champagne um, mix of the single pot still as well as the single malt. Um, that fruitiness, that lightness is kind of being pulled down and a little bit torn apart by the by the um, the berries and so on. But yet, they don't really sink. They're always competing against each other and fighting against each other. It's an up and down and so on. In comparison, over here, the Irishman. Florio Mazal cast finish. Hmm. From the beginning to the end, there's a domination of that finish. That red wine finish is there from the very moment it touches your tongue until the very, very end where that finish just fades out. And if you like a nice, heavy red wine, mazala um, finish, this is your thing. Very well executed, very, very well done. Over here, it's not perfectly executed. But wait, I have an idea. Um, in my German video, I did two things. First of all, I played with air. What does air do? You can aerate a good red wine. You put it through that aerator and it gives bubbles and it gives oxygen to this. Now, um, over here, I must admit, this has been open now for exactly almost one year. And it's been a third, it's down below the neck, and that might have created a nice environment where there's a tiny little bit of oxidation, and this whiskey has developed into something that's even better than at the very beginning. Here, this whiskey is just getting to the neck, and it hasn't had the chance yet to develop, hasn't yet had the chance to breathe. And so what I did is I poured the glasses back and forth like Ralphie did to see if I could aerate the whiskey, if it would help a lot didn't that much it did a little bit but it didn't really do it so what i did is i took this down to like 40 percent added some water and the very first thing i realized is in the nose is i have a complimentary moment the red of the blueberry um, raspberry and blackberries complement now the vanilla sugary um multi type of moment it's no longer fighting against each other it's actually very, very enjoyable. Hmm. Even on the palate, from the beginning till the end, it's creamier, it's silkier, there's a higher viscosity, it's sweeter, and the entire time that red wine is no longer a dominant factor, but rather a supporting factor that makes this actually a better whiskey now my question of the day is number one where is cast number three one four six the second question of the day why did you add five percent abv to this whiskey i personally believe that at 40 percent it would have been smoother silkier better and well-rounded rather than pumping it up and making it into something it's really not i enjoyed this whiskey thoroughly at 40 percent 45%, nah, I'd give it a C minus minus at the best. With water, taking it down to the 40% mark, I'm getting, you're going to give this actually almost like a B minus, a, a C plus 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 plus. This is actually an excellent whiskey at that, at that, in that manner. But hey, you're selling at 45%, and I don't know why. Hmm. 
So if Barnard Walsh or Woody or whoever else watches this um, this video here of the Writer's Tears Mazala, could you please inform me of one, where's the missing, missing cask of 3146? And then number two, what actually convinced you or persuaded you to add an extra 5% to this whiskey? Because I personally don't feel it did anything positive to the whiskey, but rather took away from that wonderful mouthfeel that I remember and I know and I can just compliment you on with this finish. All right. Thank you very much for watching. My question of the day is what other whiskeys do you know that have a Mazala cask finish? Now, it could be from Ireland. Hmm, I don't know very many. Um, nothing at, at the moment. I know a few, maybe four or five that I could mention also from Scotch. Um, your turn to do it. If you know any bourbons that have been actually um, finished in a Mazala cask, that I would be highly interested in knowing because I don't know any of those. And of course, we might have something from Australia or from Japan or from um, Taiwan or from Denmark or from Austria or wherever else. Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany, giving this a solid, with water, a solid C plus, a value for money, mm, C minus. I would rather have two and a half of the normal Righteous Tears than one of these with a ma Mazala finish. Um, it really doesn't do it for me. The double oak, um, two double oaks versus one of these, actually I'd rather have one of those as well, and so on and so on. With a cognac cask, that's just amazing. If you can find this on the auction site and you like the Mazala finish, go for it. If you can find this someplace and you're at the airport or the Celtic um, Celtic whiskey shop in um, in Dublin, or you're one of the lucky few um, of the 400 plus people that will get this bottle in Australia, congratulations. What's your opinion of it? Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Thank you very much for watching. My videos are published Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If you want to get in contact with me, just write whiskeyjason at one word, whiskeyjason at gmail.com. All the best. Bye-bye.